This took place in February of 1988, when I was only 8 years old. I'm now approaching my mid-40s. I still have massive anxiety when I think back to that night. For context, I am a male, and have always been the shortest person in my class with a smaller body frame. At the time of this story, I was living with my mum, my stepdad, and older sister, three years my senior. Because my parents were extremely poor, we found ourselves moving around quite a bit. At the time this story took place, we were renting a run-down duplex in Utah. I'm fairly confident this took place on a Wednesday evening, as that was the weekday my family would gather around the television and watch America's Most Wanted. After the TV show had ended at around 9pm, we said our goodnights and headed off to our own bedrooms. It was a school night, so I often went to bed around 9. Our duplex had three bedrooms, two on the main floor and one in the basement. My room was the one on the main floor, down the hall from the living room where my mum and stepdad's bedroom were adjacent to mine at the end of the hallway. My older sister had her room in the basement. At that age, I was fearful of the dark, so would often would sleep with the bedroom light on so that I could see properly. But because my parents never paid their electricity bills, sometimes there was an issue with this. We also had a false sense of security living in a small Utah town, and as a result, never locked our front door. However, my mum and her husband always had a lock on their bedroom door and made sure to lock it every night so we kids wouldn't come in unexpectedly. I remember drifting off to sleep shortly after laying down. It must have been around 1am when I was abruptly awoken from a peculiar noise in my room. As I sat up in bed responding to the noise, I was horrified to see two grown men sporting biker beards and easily towering six feet tall standing in my bedroom doorway. I was able to see every detail of these men because my light had been left on. The men standing in the doorway were blocking me in my room so I was not going to be able to run past them. They both had the most evil stare, looking directly into my eyes, the likes of which I'd never seen. I was petrified. I didn't know why I did this, but in a moment of complete shock I jumped up onto my bed, but only then did it dawn on me that my little body was not going to be able to get past them. My parents' room was directly towards their backs, and my first instinct was to run into their room. Looking back now, I realize it would have done no good, since they slept securely and comfortably behind their locked bedroom door while this was taking place. Once my body motions caught up with my thought process, I instead ran to the corner of my room and crouched down, all the meanwhile the three of us are awkwardly staring at each other. I tried to let out a scream to call for my parents, but this would be the only time in my life where I was paralyzed with fear. My vain attempts to scream mounted into silent desperation. I didn't know what these people wanted, and I could only imagine the worst. One of the men pushed his index finger to his lips in order to signal me to remain quiet. As I trembled with fear, the second man reached out to his pocket and pulled out a six-inch blade. My room is fairly small, and they're both standing within four feet of me. He makes sure to swivel the knife in the air and make a point that he's not afraid to gut me like a fish. I nearly piss in my pajamas. Another attempt to scream yields nothing. Shortly after, they close my bedroom door on me, and I am left alone. Instinctively, I thought they were robbing our house, but now that they were exposed and had threatened me, surely they'd leave, right? Boy, was I wrong. I waited for a few minutes. Do I open my door and try to pound on my parents' bedroom door? Are they waiting for me behind the closed door? Who knew? After a few minutes, I gathered what little courage I could and decided to crawl back into bed and place the sheets over my entire body and wait it out. Were they planning on killing my family? I asked myself, did they leave yet? What do they want? 
My anxiety grew as the thoughts continued to race through my mind. As I lay there intently listening for any sounds, I could hear them moving about the house and opening and closing various kitchen drawers. The walls were paper thin in that cheap duplex, so every move was easily heard. Next, I hear them make their way down the stairs to the basement where my sister is sleeping. As I'm listening to every frightening sound, I hope with all my might that my stepdad would wake up. He was a fairly large man and these creeps weren't exactly being quiet. This goes on for nearly an hour. I'm laying in bed, petrified, listening to their every move. To my horror, my entire family is sleeping through the ordeal. After some time, I hear the front door shut and the early winter sun is rising. My stepdad is a factory worker and usually woke up at 5am. I couldn't wait to hear my parents unlock their bedroom door. As soon as I heard their alarm, I left my room. I was hysterical while trying to explain what just happened. Next, my sister woke up. I was desperate. I wanted her to tell me about her night in the basement. My parents tried their best to calm me down, tears running down my face. I had been traumatized. To my disbelief, my parents chalked it up to a bad dream. In fact, I was told this wasn't possible, because if anything like this were to have happened, surely they'd wake up. My sister saw the desperation in my eyes and knew this was serious. Her and I went through our entire house to look for items that may have been stolen. We came across her dresser drawer left half open and many personal items out of place. This was enough evidence for her to become as frightened. But because nothing was missing from our house, my parents didn't bother calling the police. I was made to go to school as though the ordeal had never happened. Fast forward two weeks. We're watching TV and an update comes about a criminal being captured that was featured in Most Wanted. My heart sank when I recognized the mugshot on TV as one of the men in my room. Of course, disclosing this to my parents only made them believe me less. To this day, I still hold some sort of resentment towards them. While they slept peacefully behind a locked bedroom door, I was being victimized. Needless to say, I never sleep without locking my doors. My story takes place 19 years ago. I'm a female and was 16 at the time at 5 foot 7. I was about 130 pounds and like to think that I'm strong, but I couldn't take on two young men. It begins with my mother and stepfather going away on vacation and leaving my 17 year old sister and I home alone. They did this quite often. My parents were not winning any parenting awards my sister and I didn't get along either. She was a nasty piece of work. Luckily, she decided to go stay at a friend's house while my parents were away. I was nervous about being alone, so I had my boyfriend stay with me. He was a pugnacious dickhead, but I'm glad he was there. One night, Brett and I were at my house and we had just started messing around when I hear a really loud knock at the door. My room was in the basement, but at the landing area between the stairs. You know how some staircases are broken up? There are turnaround areas, that's the landing. There was a window that I could see the stairs that led up to the alcove of our front porch. I could see two people standing there, and just as I was peeking out to see them better, one of them saw me. I remember feeling the breath sucked out of my chest. There were two young men standing on my porch, and I had no idea who the hell they were. The guy that saw me let his friend know, and they both looked in the window and asked me to come to the door. My boyfriend had gone upstairs to open the door, and I remember freaking out because I told him not to. He was one of those guys that thought he was Mr. Tough Guy and believed he could fight anyone. He was telling the guys to leave just as I joined him at the door. They saw me and called me by name and asked for me and to let them come inside. Brett told them to piss off. One guy, I think his name was Wes or Les or something like that, insisted we come out, 
and that they wanted to talk to my boyfriend. I said no thanks, we're gonna bed, and shut the door. I was really confused and getting very frightened. They stood at my doorstep for a few minutes and then began knocking again. They explained to me through the door that he was my sister's friend, and that she told him I was home alone and they should come by. I knew my sister and believed them. That did not however make me feel stupid and I told them to leave. They started kicking the door. I was shaking and I seriously feared that it wouldn't hold up. I was so scared that I ran into my kitchen to call the police. I was assured that they would be there soon and to lock the doors and stay on the phone. Meanwhile, Brett was still yelling at them, which only served to piss these guys off more. I begged him to shut up, but he wouldn't listen. I was locking all the doors and windows upstairs while Brett went down to check the doors. Down in the basement there was a huge mudroom area, and it had a thick wooden door made of 2x4 planks, kind of like a barn door. The door had a big old lock on it, some spring-loaded turnbolt, and also had a plank to set across it like a barricade. One of the guys was pounding on the door, and Brett heard him tell the other to try and go to the back door. This stupid door was one of those 1960s things that had a happy little square window right at face level with a little curtain across it. I was at this door trying to jam a chair underneath the flimsy knob when I looked up and saw the unnamed guy just looking in at me and the dispatcher asked if I was okay. I barely squeaked out that one of the guys was looking right at me through the window. He was older than me, probably 20, and he was tall and looked scary as hell. His dark eyes were drilling into me, and he wore this creepy, placid smile on his face. I had never seen this man before, but he knew my name. He tapped on the window with one finger, never breaking eye contact, and said, Becky, let me in. I couldn't breathe. The knob was rattling as he was messing with it, and he said again, let me in, Becky. I just want to see if you're okay. I just want to talk. He stared at me. I didn't say a thing. I was just three feet from him with my back pressed to the fridge. Then he started beating on the door and screaming, shouting to let him in, and that if he had to break in the door, he'd kill us both just to open the door. He looked maniacal. There was a loud knock at the front door, and the man went silent. He gave me the most hateful sneer I'd ever seen. I heard shouting and he ran down the back stairs and into the woods along the back of my yard. Brett had gone to the door. It was the cops. There were two female officers at the front door, and Mum was just starting to raise her voice to ask where I was and to come to the door too. I was so relieved, I began sobbing. I told them... They had run away through the woods. Luckily, the woods were not deep. They actually ran along the bank of a large river, and there was a barricade just up from where the woods met the road. One officer ran around the back while one stayed to get a description and take my statement. Officer 1 came back and spoke to Officer 2. She said she saw them running through the bridge. They both left in a hurry, hopped in the cruiser and sped off. I was still crying and shaking, but absolutely furious with Brett for riling them up. I went to make myself some tea, thinking of all the ways I could kill my sister when she got home. I had so much anger, fear, and adrenaline pumping through me I could have ripped her to shreds in that moment. Twenty minutes later, the cruiser came back. There were the two guys sitting in the back seat, and the officers wanted me to confirm if it was the right guys. I looked through the window and saw them. They still looked terrifying to me. They were in cuffs and couldn't get to me, but I would not approach them. Neither would look at me. I confirmed it was them, and we spoke a bit, and I told the cops about my sister, suggesting that these two men should come and see me. Officer 2 mumbled, What a cow. I had to agree. I pressed charges for attempted forcible entry, property damage, as they had broken a window in the living room, trespassing, disorderly conduct, and attempted assault. Initially, they both pled not guilty, 
but later admitted to some of the charges. They both got 18 months in jail and were forbidden from contacting me or my boyfriend ever again and to be at least 500 meters from me at all times. I never heard from them again and I confronted my sister about it and of course she denied it then laughed about it, laughed at me. She was an awful person. I have no idea what their true intentions were as they maintained they were just there to talk to me. I'm thankful I didn't have to find out. It was 2005 and I was 16 years old, home alone with my new pup on the 4th of July. My mum was only 16 years older than me, so she was out partying and I didn't expect her home that night. My boyfriend was supposed to stay over but had to unexpectedly work a double shift and because of the nature of his job he couldn't just leave. My house was at the end of a half mile dirt road with many potholes and washboard bumps. It's a private drive with sparsely spaced homes mostly inhabited by family. In between my house and the next door neighbor lies an empty lot. As a child, my cousins and I would explore this lot. We would find abandoned mattresses, evidence of homeless people's shelters, and paraphernalia of drug use. My cousins always found it exciting to explore this lot, but I always found it to be creepy. Back to 4th of July. I had spent the whole night in my living room watching movies with my windows open, because it was an unusually hot night, and we didn't have air conditioning. Periodically, I would get the feeling of being watched, so eventually I closed the windows and curtains. My new puppy seemed unusually restless, which only added to my unease. Every time I took my puppy out to use the restroom, he would pace and require a lot of coaxing to come back inside. Finally, at around 3 a.m., I decided it was time to try and get some sleep. I still had a gnawing feeling in my gut that something was off but I convinced myself that I was being paranoid. I armed the house alarm to stay, which meant only the windows and door sensors would work if triggered and not the indoor motion detector as I was inside. Again, because it was hot, most of the windows were cracked about two inches. The house alarm was set up to where you could arm the alarm with the windows cracked. I think I should mention that at 16 years old, I was 4 foot 11 and 89 pounds. I had a tough childhood, so I was street smart and had great instincts. However, I was a child and looked like a child. So there I am curled up in bed with my new puppy at my feet. I toss and turn, begging the sandman to lull me into sleep, to no avail. When the alarm went off, I jumped out of bed, heart racing, and felt my blood pump through my body, rushing to my heart and head. My dog barked. That was immediate chaos. The whole scenario was disorienting. Then to add to the insanity, the landline starts to ring, which I assume was the alarm company checking in. The only landline phone in the house is in my mum's room across the hallway. I decide it's best to answer the phone and tell the company I'm not sure why the alarm is sounding off. I timidly run across the dark hallway, scantily clad in just a tank top and booty shorts, remember the feeling of being watched earlier in the night. I make it into my mum's room panting, full of adrenaline, and reach for the ringing phone. I simultaneously answer the phone and look up at the window in my mum's room, which faces the open lot. To my horror, I observe three pairs of glowing eyes staring back at me from the outside open window. There are three men standing outside my house. The screen had been pried off and the window was now wide open, which is what triggered the alarm. It was pitch dark outside, so the intricate details and subtleties of the men were lost to the wash of grey and blacks. All I could see was the glare from their eyes. I have yet to encounter so much evil rage in that one look. I could feel that I was in danger without a word. I stood staring back at these ominous glowing eyes for what seemed like forever. I froze in horror and my stomach felt like it fell through the floor. My horror paralysis 
was shattered by my German shepherd running past me and barking at the window with every one of his hairs on edge. I blinked through my horror, answered the phone and screamed, Send the police, there's armed men coming into my house. I threw down the phone, ran down the hall towards the garage, where I hid in a dusty closet that was most likely full of spiders. I remember being faintly worried about these things, but I knew I had to remain quiet and still. I was attempting to quiet my loud, panting breaths, as to not give away my position, because at this point I had no idea if the men were actually armed. My thoughts were flying at an alarming rate. I always thought that because I was mature for my age, and had some pretty messed up experiences in my past, I would have clarity in that situation. But I was wrong. I was a shivering, chattering mess, and it took all my willpower to calm myself down. The alarm continued to wail, which put my hearing at a disadvantage. I couldn't discern if the men were in my house, or even worse, if they knew where I was hiding. I had no idea where my pup went, which only added to the misfortune. My hands were clamping, my legs were beginning to fatigue, and my mouth was dry and had a sickly taste to it. I couldn't tell you how long I felt that way, but it felt like hours. I kept wondering why the cops hadn't shown up. Then a horrifying thought crossed my mind. What if the armed company hadn't dispatched cops? Too much time had passed without an authoritative knock on the front door from the police. I began to formulate a plan to escape to my cousins next door when the most beautiful sound chimed through my aluminium garage door. Police sirens. When the sirens got loud enough and I could faintly see the shimmers of the red and blue lights, I opened the garage door and spilled onto the chest of a cop. I startled him, but he quickly composed himself and began to take report of the most horrific moments of my young life. I exclaimed to him, what took you guys so long? To which he replied that the first cop got a blowout on one of his tires because of my stupid dirt roads. That's what caused the delay. I literally could have died because I live on a dirt road. The cops were never able to find the three men. They searched high and low, took fingerprints and footprints, but nothing ever came of it. To their horror, in the empty lot behind my house, on an old ragged mattress, the cops found duct tape, a knife, and zip ties. This was all collected, but again, never came to anything. My pup was found safe in the backyard. Apparently he jumped out the house after the men, and most likely chased them off. I ended up staying with my boyfriend for a few weeks after that. To this day, I still have PTSD from the whole experience. If I hadn't have armed the alarm that night, I would have been dead. I know that to my core. I was living in the Fiji Islands back in 2016. I was 14 years old. This story happened to my family, but mainly my mum. It was on the 31st of October, and I was at my school for a Halloween-based party, and my parents and my little sister were going to a family friend's Halloween party, so the house was empty. My party finished at 9pm, and my dad came to pick me up, but dropped off my mum and sister at the house because our security alarm was ringing. Because no one was home, my family obviously called the security company over and they sent a van with three guards. My mum opened the house and let everyone in to check the whole house and they see no one. My mother checks all the cupboards and under the bed with my little sister who's only 12. The security go outside in the garden and in the basement to check if there's anyone and it's not an accidental ring, but we don't have any pets. My mum turns on all the lights from the living room to the balcony. She starts to open the window and the gates that protect all the windows to get to the balcony. But when she looks at the keyhole, she notices flip-flops on the floor. She then looks closer and sees two pairs of legs hiding really close together, near the wall, under a garden sofa. My mum yells out of her lungs that they're on the balcony the two guys got scared and jumped off the balcony into the garden. 
One of the guards grabs the guy, but the second intruder jumps on the guard and they run away, jumping over the fence and into the forest. My mother regrets yelling that if she'd come down and spoken to the security guards quietly, they probably would have been caught. My mother was crying, holding my sister to hide her and telling her that everything would be all right. The security then called the police and they did a report and described the guys. The cops were there in minutes. The guys who jumped lost a hat, their flip-flops, and their socks to use as gloves, as well as two knives. Also, some of the thieves stole stuff from our garden. Sadly, the guys were never found again. But two weeks later, my mum pulls out of the driveway and looks in the rear mirror of the car, and is 90% sure she sees the two guys opposite our house staring at her. The short one had the same new hat, and the other guy had brand new flip-flops. When my mum drove away to the police station, the guys were gone, never to be seen again. I got home after with my dad and mum and found my sister crying. My dad was mad that he didn't stay, but my mum had drank and could not drive. Luckily, my mum saw them before she opened the window, because if she hadn't, who knows what would have happened. Now, how on earth did they get to the balcony? It's going to sound a bit silly, but right next to the balcony where they were hiding, there are two wooden poles linked with a weird plank. It's not to hang anything, but just there. My dad asked the landlord to get rid of it, but the landlord didn't want to. To give more about the pole thing, me at 15 slash 16, when I was six foot, I could jump and climb onto my balcony because I did sneak out of the house to see my girlfriend at the time. I'm 21 now, and ever since have made sure to check every single door is locked before I do anything. I was sleeping next to my husband when I was awoken in the middle of the night to the smell of cigarette smoke. Neither of us smoked. I stayed still and glanced around the dark bedroom and saw the glowing tip of a cigarette light up and the silhouette of a man standing in our bedroom, just standing there watching us sleep, smoking his cigarette. I was spooning my husband at the time, so I whispered, There's someone in the room with us. He jumped out of bed naked and chased this guy back through the window he came through and halfway down the block before losing him. The BTK Strangler was still active in our town at the time, and we wondered if that was possibly an encounter with him. When I was maybe six or seven, we were visiting family in New Orleans. I was sleeping in this strange room, strange bed, so I was having trouble getting to sleep. I heard a tapping on the window, softly. I looked at the window and thought I saw something move that looked like a brimmed hat. It was a split-level home, so whoever it was would have had to have been tall. I woke up my parents and they told me the house was old, with wooden floors that creak, and that I was imagining things so to go back to bed. In the morning, we found the back gate lock had been broken. This story is from a friend of mine. Back in 2019, they were asked to dog sit for a co-worker for 24 hours while their co-worker went to Atlantic City with his girlfriend. The dog was very easy to take care of, friendly, loving. The hours went by and after watching a movie, my friend really had to use the restroom. While doing his business, he could hear the dog barking downstairs and assumed the dog wanted to go out to take care of its business too since he hadn't let the dog out for a few hours. After going to the living room to let the dog out, my friend noticed the dog wasn't barking at the front door to leave. It was barking at the basement door. Before my friend could investigate what the dog was barking at, the door handle turned and three men in masks emerged from the door and then ran away after the big German shepherd bit one of them in the leg. The dog named Lucy saved the day. I am a 21-year-old female. At the time of this event, I was around 17 and preparing for a camping trip. I had to load my car up, so I was cleaning it out. I was left home alone while my dad and brother were out of town on a trip. Our older sister being a town over, I never really minded being left alone, 
It was nice, honestly. The experience definitely left me feeling otherwise, and to this day, I cannot comfortably be left alone in that house for long periods of time. Prior to this, I would have liked to think I was a vigilant person, definitely hypervigilant now. I was cleaning out my car, enjoying my day and excited for the camping trip. I was finishing up in my car, my windows were down, and I hopped in and began the ignition to roll them up. As I'm doing so, I look in my rearview mirror. I noticed an older man standing at the end of my driveway. Instantly, my stomach dropped. I remember thinking to myself, how long has he been there? It was obvious I was home alone. Typically, there were three cars plus an air steam in the driveway. Now stood just me and my silver Honda Accord, alone. He stood there smiling, kind of. I wasn't really sure what to do. He was just looking. I hopped out of my car and just stared back at him, giving him a look like, are you lost? Can I help you? A piss off kind of look. He didn't respond. He just stood there. So I hurried into the house, stood by the door and locked my car, making sure to have the alarm go off a few times. While doing so, I was staring at him, trying to make a note of his appearance. I had never seen him in my neighborhood. He definitely looked disheveled and out of place. Maybe he wandered from the retirement home a few blocks over, but this was my home, the home I had grown up in all my life, and I felt unnerved by this man's demeanor. I live in a nice neighborhood. I never thought something like this would happen to me. Again, I actively try to be vigilant and aware of what's going on around me, but this just shows you, you could be doing everything right and it could still happen to you. After getting into the house, I began calling practically everyone I know, mainly family, especially ones close by, to come to the house and just ease my mind. But no one was answering. I grew panicked, as I was trying to decide what the hell to do. I watched him pick up the newspaper from his feet and head towards my front door. I crapped a brick and hurried into my brother's room to spy from his window, still trying to contact someone. He began knocking, then banging, and ringing the bell. I mean, he watched me go in. He knew I was here alone. My dad's house is practically falling apart. If he wanted to, he could have easily gotten in somehow, especially if he managed to get into my backyard and try to enter from there. I thought if I didn't answer, he'd just give up. I was unfortunately wrong. He proceeded back down the driveway to my car, peering in each window circling it. Then he made his way towards the sides of my house, looking in windows heading towards the back gate. In retrospect, definitely should have called the cops. I just didn't want to believe it had to escalate that far, but I definitely felt unsafe slash life-threatened and terrified to the point of not moving. I sprinted to the back door to make sure it was locked, thinking I was literally screwed. Then, as if the gates to heaven had parted, I heard my dogs going crazy. Suddenly I had an aha moment. My dogs, a German Shepherd and a German Pointer mix, were barking up a storm. As I imagined, the guy was aiming to get through the back. With their presence, he hurried back out front. He again started to bang on my door. I would gotten hold of my grandpa. He was heading over as quickly as he could. I just had to wait it out. But how the hell do I get him to leave? It clicked. I called my dogs in and whispered, Who's here? Sick em. And they went absolutely ballistic barking like mad at this unknown man at our doorstep. So much so, he left. My grandpa came, searched, saw no one. We even drove around to look for the man, to see if he had left empty-handed. I've been through so much, but just thinking about how vulnerable and naive I was in that moment will forever haunt me. Sadly, as a young woman, I am now bound up in other uncomfortable, threatening positions that suck but I won't be screwed over or go down gently, nor will my dogs. I don't know what would have happened without them, and I'm thankful for my intuition. I live in a very rural town in Australia. I have a close-knit group of about four to five friends, and we hang out all the time. On this specific day, I was at my friend's house. About two days before this, 
Her family came home and all the doors were wide open, yet nothing was taken. This family insist to leave their doors open, specifically in this town where crime runs rampant. On the day that I was over with Mike at Alyssa's, we were just hanging out on our phones when the front door banged open. We looked at each other but brushed it off as wind slamming on the door. In hindsight, the wind would not have been able to reach this door as it was in a little covering. Maybe two minutes after, the two sliding back doors were slammed very loudly. We brushed it off not to scare ourselves. But then we heard loud noises inside the house and footsteps running around their noisy wooden floor. This is when alarm bells began to ring in my head. I was thinking about how someone had already been there and wondering if this was the same person slash people. We jumped up and me and Alyssa held the bedroom door closed. Alyssa suggested that we call the police. I didn't think it was a good idea, but as I'm holding the door, someone starts running and slams into her door. At this point, it was definitely time to call the cops. They pick up and try to talk to Alyssa. A little difficult because she's bawling her eyes out. Eventually, the operator understood, and within less than two minutes, the police are at the door. These police officers were very kind and just asked about the situation before saying, we found the kid. I thought they meant the person that broke in, so I asked them about the kid. And the police officer looked confused and said, the missing five-year-old? We had no clue there was a missing child on the loose. And the police officer said, there were about 40 cars looking for this kid and many people knocking on the doors to ask if anyone had seen her. While I think the police were kind, their reasoning for the break-in was crazy, and they said it was probably a police officer running in and looking for the kid. We all looked confused and then realised what he said, and backtracked saying that they should have announced themselves though. Pretty unsettling with police officers trying to calm us down, but after talking about it with my friends, whoever broke in probably saw Alyssa's mum leaving the house with two teens in the back, so thought the house was empty. Alyssa has a brother so altogether they have three in the house, but on this day her brother had a friend over and they were driving somewhere else. So, to the robber, please, let's not meet. This is going to sound ridiculous, and I know you may not believe it, but I'm out in the boonies in Canada. This happened when I was making meatballs at 3am, and my kitchen has a door with glass on it leading to the porch. First, the doorknob turned, and I blamed the cats. Then, someone started kicking the door. I think that they were checking if we were home or had dogs, because they didn't kick the glass, only the door. So I woke up my fiancé and he grabbed a hunting knife, and I armed myself with a meatball and turned the light on. We ended up buying the door motion sensor alarms for that back door that chime when the door is opened as well as some lights for the porch that are motion activated. The spooky part is when I woke up at 2.30 a.m. and had the sudden urge to make my great-grandmother's meatball recipe. I'm not sure if we would have had known about the attempt or if they'd have tried harder if I wasn't on the other side of the door to react. We both believed my granny was watching from wherever souls go and wanted me to be alert and not scared. Also, because this happened mid-prep, I was filled with adrenaline. I woke him up and just walked around the house and onto the porch with a raw, half-rolled meatball hanging out of my hand. If the person had broken through, maybe I'd have thrown it at them? Who knows? But it was a comfort for me. And while I would not like it to happen again, it feels good to know that either spidey senses or lost loved ones have my back. They didn't come back. But in that same week, when we let our neighbours know, we found a car had been stolen nearby and another house had been broken into. Our neighbour, who also had a dog, said that her dog was upset a few days later, but whoever it was didn't attempt to go into their house. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's collection of break-in stories. It's definitely unsettling when it happens to you or someone you know. If there's a story that you would like to share, 
You can find a link in the description to my email, themortismedia at gmail.com or our Reddit page, r slash mortismedia, where you can submit your stories and have them heard on the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, you can find a link to Patreon or join the membership button here on YouTube too to get a bunch of perks as well for doing so. You can also find even more stories on our app, on screen now, or on Spotify and other places you listen to podcasts, with new episodes dropping every Wednesday. But for now, stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.